burning Emerson. Wildfires rage on in California. And Democrats celebrate a historic victory in Arizona. All that and more today, Wednesday, November 14th. Don't go anywhere. Salcedo. Emerson's own troublemakers are here to perform two songs for us today. But first, here are this week's top stories. And a huge win for the, for the LGBTQ community as Democrat Kirsten Cinema was declared the winner of Arizona State Race. Cinema, no stranger to making LGBTQ community history, is the first openly bisexual person ever elected to the U.S. Senate. Arizona Senate race came down to the wire and was called Tuesday afternoon, with Cinema taking 49% of the vote and with Republican Marsha Sally taking 48%. Democratic National Community Chairman Tom Perez called the win a stunning victory, saying Arizonans went to the polls last Tuesday looking for bold new leadership, and that's exactly what they're going to get with their first ever female senator and our nation's second openly LGBTQ senator. The deadliest fire in California's history has killed at least 42 people and over 6,000 homes are destroyed. That fire in Northern California, which includes the city Paradise, continues to inflict damage as parts of Southern California are being affected by a different fire. More than 300,000 people have been forced from their homes statewide. Most of those people live in Los Angeles County. Firefighters are still working to contain the fires and coroner search and re recovery teams continue to identify remains of those killed in the fire. President Trump's overhaul of the White House continues after the firing of Jeff Sessions. President Trump is reportedly eyeing re a replacement for the current Secretary of Homeland Security, Kirsten Nielsen. The Washington Post reported on Monday that Trump has told his advisors he plans on removing Nielsen as soon as possible. Nielsen's departure would come after a midterm election in which President Trump focused heavily on immigration. Amazon announced where their newest headquarters will go, New York City and Arlington, Virginia. The two locations in Long Island City and Queens and around the area, Crystal City and Arlington, will each house at least 25,000 employees. The announcement marks the end of a 14-month 14 14 month competition between cities trying to attract Amazon. The company says it will start hiring for the new headquarters in 2019. CNN has filed the lawsuit against President Trump. The goal of the lawsuit is to restore White House correspondent Jim Acosta's access to the White House. Both CNN and Acosta are plaintiffs in the case, while President Trump and John Kelly headline the list of defendants. The White House Correspondent Association has made its support of Acosta public, saying while the suit is specific to CNN and Acosta, this could have happened to anyone. If left unchallenged, the actions of the White House would create a dangerous chilling effect for any journalist who covers our elected officials. On election night, Florida Democratic candidate for governor Andrew Gillum conceded to Republican Ron DeSantis. However, the race was close enough for Florida law to trigger a recount. Now, Gillum has taken back his concession in the hopes the recount will find him the winner. Let's now go to Francis Hoy for a detailed weather report. Francis. Good morning, Emerson. <clears throat> Last week, the weather was actually pretty beautiful, but it's time to bundle up because the weather is changing now. Today, the weather is mostly sunny and breezy with a high of 38 degrees and a low of 23 degrees. Tomorrow will be cloudy all day, while at night, mixed rain snow is predicted, accumulating a coating to an inch. The temperature will keep in around the lower 30s. As a result, Friday will see rain with a high of 47 degrees and a low of 33, 35 degrees. Things will start to clear up at night. On Saturday, we'll see a mixture of sun and clouds. Temperature will range from a high of 49 degrees to a low of 30 degrees. On Sunday and Monday, it will be mostly sunny and just a little bit cloudy with a high in the mid-40s and a low in the mid-30s. After that, we can expect a week of <clears throat> sunny weather, but it's unlikely that the temperature will go up. So be sure to pull out your winter jackets from your closets. We'll see you next week. Now let's go to Juliana for a special Thanksgiving segment. It is me again. Our lifestyle correspondent Maria Sato is unfortunately out this week, so I'm filling in. Uh, Thanksgiving is right around the corner and all college students are talking about is how excited we are to see our families and friends back home and eat an amazing meal. 
Uh, make sure to catch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The event will kick off promptly at 9 a.m. and end around noon. This year, there will be several music performances along with the classic inflated balloon, Snoopy is my favorite. Singer-songwriter John Legend will be there along with singer Leona Lewis and the acapella sensation Pentatonix. Thanksgiving is all about food, but when the dinner ends, we all struggle uh, with what to do with the leftovers. Uh, so here's one easy way to use Thanksgiving leftovers to make an all-new treat. It is a Thanksgiving version of s'mores. So you can use the leftover pumpkin pie that you had the other night, add marshmallows and graham crackers and sandwich it, and there you go. So I'm going to demonstrate that quickly for you. So this treat is super duper easy and delicious. Um, one of my favorite things to do with Thanksgiving leftovers is to make a sandwich. Um, and you can literally put everything on it and it sounds really gross, but it's delicious. Um, but this is an excellent dessert alternative. Um, so the first thing you need is graham crackers. Oh look, there's one already open for me. Great. Um, break it in half, just like that. And then take your pumpkin pie. Delic I feel so bad destroying a brand new pie, but um, here I go. Take a little scoop of it. And so this is like kind of acting as the chocolate, but honestly, I think adding chocolate would make it so delicious too. So you just put that on there. There you go. I put a very healthy heaping amount. Um, then you take a marshmallow, put it on top. If you're like feeling crazy, you can add two. And then you take the graham cracker and you just squish it. Oh Jesus, I'm gonna make a mess. Um, and then obviously I don't have any uh, sort of stove with me right now, but if I were making this at home, I might put it in the microwave or something, um, you know, get that gooey marshmallow. Uh, I'm going to taste it. It's delicious. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving and we will be right back after these messages. What is this? It's a call for help. So, will you? Yes. Yes, a thousand times yes. right here on the Emerson Channel. Your one-stop shop for all things orientation. Come see our shows live at 7 o'clock all of next week. Can't wait to see you there. See ya. There's a live studio audience, and they're just going to laugh at everything we say. And it's going to be awesome. It's just this never-ending cycle of positivity and community and late-night content. I'm going to wear a suit. You should probably wear one, too. What do you think? I think you should drink up, because it's closing time. Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. Angel, it is almost time for entertainment, so you know what that means. My weekly terrible joke. Hey, Angel, Kanye, believe it? Kanye's in the news again. Oh, Lord. Right? Kanye and Lord are feuding. Okay. Let's hand it over to our entertainment team for more info and uh, better jokes, hopefully. I tried. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Juliana and Angel. Lord is accusing Kanye of stealing her set design. On Lord's melodrama tour, she used a large floating rectangular box with um, her and dancers performing inside of it. A few days ago, Kanye West and Kid Cudi used what looks like the exact same concept, but others say that Kanye originated the idea of the floating stage in his St. Pablo tour. But the thing is that Lord and, Sean and Kanye share the same set designer. 
So, what conclusions can we draw? Uh, it's totally the same set. It is it's the same like, set. It's like, you know, it's like... And obviously, everyone's on Lord's side. Duh! 100%, but, Kanye just like, like naturally and innately. But, also, I mean, the set designer, why is she... Why did she do that? Yeah. There were like sur there photos that resurfaced <laughs> of her like work in like 2007 and 2015 mm -hmm. of like the exact same thing yeah. also. So. Choose another shape, maybe, <laughs> instead of a cube. Instead of a cube. Anyway. Um, so recently, GQ put Serena Williams on their magazine cover as Woman of the Year. They attract a controversy because they put women in quotation marks. Serena has been body shaved and described as masculine throughout her career. So the punctuation is especially questionable. Fans made it clear that they were upset. The magazine's uh, research manager, Mick Roos, explained that the cover features the writing of designer Virgil Abloh, who is known for his designs featuring words and quotation marks. So, Sam, do you think that this is just a harmless misunderstanding? Um, or is this something that deserves greater attention? I think that, like, no matter, like, it was just, like, dumb. Like, obviously, yeah. they were going to face backlash. Um, I think Virgil Abloh is really cool, really love the work he does, but... Um, yeah, like, just, I also think that, like, that concept isn't iconic enough for people to be like, oh, yeah, great. I totally didn't realize that. And, yeah. like, why, with, you right. know, with, like, her past and, like, people, exactly. like, you know, saying all that exactly. sort of stuff. Exactly, it's like, why, why even would you just, even? like, do that? Exactly. Even, whatever. Okay, well, legendary comic book writer Stan Lee died early Monday morning at age 95. He reportedly suffered several illnesses over the last year from pneumonia to vision issues. Um, Stan started Marvel Comics in 1961 with the Fantastic Four. He went on to create Spider-Man, Black Panther, The Incredible Hulk, X-Men, Iron Man, and The Avengers, and often used his platform to battle issues of racism and bigotry. The prophylic author also made cameos in upwards of uh, 25 Marvel movies and TV shows. Were you ever like a huge fan of Marvel? I, I'm not a huge fan, but I am like, you know, a semi huge right. fan. Like, I love the movies. Yeah. I love the Stanley cameos. Yeah. And it's like um, upsetting. I yeah. think no matter what, like, we can all like agree that he just like, his, he's like changed the course of yeah, entertainment he's history well loved. for sure. And like, I, I heard they pre recorded his cameos yeah, for like a so couple of movies. That's and sweet. Stuff. It'll be his legacy leading yeah. on. We love you, Stanley. <laughs> Okay, now let's go to Danielle Fineza with local Boston and Massachusetts stories. A Boston fan took a dangerous fall at the Patriots-Titan game in Tennessee on Sunday. Thomas Carrico fell from the seating area to the ground while reaching for a t-shirt on a ledge. Carrico fell over the railing and landed on the concrete floor after attempting to grab the shirt. Police reported that he was in critical but stable condition after the fall. A cannabis retail store is days away from opening in Northampton. This store, named New England Access Treatment, was among the first to receive a final retail license. However, the store cannot officially open until the Cannabis Control Commission tests the inventory. The store itself will sell both medical and recreational cannabis. The store will offer an express lane as well as a full service option for customers. Private consultation rooms and consumer education materials will also be available. Officials plan to open the store before Thanksgiving. Residents of condos near the Ritz-Carlton sued the city of Boston on Friday. The residents sued due to the constant noise created by protesters outside of the hotel. Residents want police to enforce noise ordinances that prohibit anything above 70 decibels. A reading from one of the building's lobbies registered 120 decibels on Friday morning. Hotel workers march seven days a week for as long as 12 hours a day in protest of their wages and benefits. Suffolk Superior Court Judge Robert Tochka urged the, city, urged the city to find a, quote, happy medium without a court order. That's all from me on local news. Let's head over to Angel Salcedo for the latest sports stories. Thanks, Danielle, and good morning, Emerson, again. Jade is out sick this morning, so I'm your sports correspondent for the day. Willie O'Ree was inducted into the NHL Hall of Fame on Monday. O'Ree became the first black player in the NHL on January 18, 1958, playing for the Boston Bruins. Now 83, O'Ree said, quote, all I wanted to be was a hockey player. All I needed was the opportunity. O'Ree joins Grant Furr as the only black members in the NHL Hall of Fame. According to, New York, to the New York Times, 97% of the league is white. Brooklyn Nets guard Karis LeVert suffered a gruesome looking injury during a game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Teammate Joe Harris said that other players were visibly affected by LeVert's accident even crying in the locker room at halftime. Levert was evaluated at the hospital for surgery, for surgery in New York. On Tuesday, the team announced that his injuries are not as bad as they appeared. 
Levert was diagnosed with subtalar dislocation in his right foot, which does not require surgery. He's a promising young star in the NBA and said that he can't wait to get back playing with his team. And Boston Bruins goalie Tuka Ross took a mysterious leave of absence from his team on Friday. Rask offered little information of his, of his departure, saying only that it was due to personal reasons and that he needed to make things right with his family. On Tuesday, Rask returned to practice, making, sure, making his leave shorter than expected. Some fans praised him for taking the necessary time to care for his family. The Bruins have their next game tonight in Colorado against the Avalanche. Well, that's all I have for you in the world of sports. We'll be back after these messages. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the season. <laughs> Recording? Me? Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, we need to run. Um, I'm having... <laughs> Great to meet you. You're not going to see it with me? No. No, yeah. People always confuse me for Chris Hemsworth. Was it predictable? Were you able to tell who the murderer was? Hi. Hello. Hi. Were you able to tell who the murderer was? Hi. Yes, hi. Sorry, people keep breaking this wall today. Hey, I'm here with Chris. Wait, that's... No, Dan. Dan, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm the personification of the... <laughs> Can we cut? <laughs> Sassy today. Our viewers with a bunch... I think... Tommy Wiseau. Sorry, Haley. Oh my God, look, it's the Hemsworth brothers. That's it. Can you host the show now? Bye. Although our reactions may be a little ridiculous. <laughs> a little bit ridiculous. They're always yeah. real. Real. Dun, 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 dun. We can't use that. <laughs> Maybe a little bit ridiculous and a bit racy. They're always <laughs> real. <laughs> from Comedians on the Tee getting coffee, and you're watching The Emerson Channel. So yeah, it's like Emerson's very own late night talk show. We've got games, like Jimmy Fallon, and we're hot, like Jimmy Kimmel, and we've got guests. I'm gonna talk to them. You can talk too, I guess. There's a live studio audience, and they're just going to laugh at everything we say, and it's going to be awesome. It's just this never-ending cycle of positivity and community and late-night content. I'm going to wear a suit. You should probably wear one, too. What do you think? I think you should drink up, because it's closing time. Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. We're so excited to have one of Emerson's acapella groups on the show this morning, The Troublemakers. Welcome everyone. Thank we you. are so Thank excited you. that you're here with us today. We're excited too. So how long have The Troublemakers been at Emerson? So The Troublemakers have been at Emerson since 2012, long before any of us were even in college. Uh, so they've been going for a while. They were a pretty small group at first and uh, got it getting as small as I think eight or nine members and then as big as 22 members. So right now we have 17 and it's been great. So Angel and I are not uh, performers in the way that you all are. So we would love to know what the most challenging part of performing a cappella is. I th definitely think that the most challenging part is that we are a cappella, so we don't have music. Um, so sometimes we can fall off pitch and then kind of just have to gather ourselves in a performance. Sometimes we start off from the beginning, not on pitch, and we're like, oh no, but we just kind of pick ourselves up and try the hardest we can, and that's why we rehearse so much, just so, so that we know how to handle ourselves in those situations. So teamwork is a big part of it. Oh, definitely. 
And with acapella being so much more difficult, are there any songs that you guys choose that you, when you hear them, you think this is perfect for acapella? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of songs that are really good. Um, a lot of pop songs, generally, uh, you, that's what you mostly hear. But uh, we do a lot of alternative songs, and we've started doing a lot of more like R&B and hip hop songs, yeah. which uh, can lend themselves actually really well to acapella if you just kind of put your own spin on them. Mm -hmm. uh, it can really play with cool voices in the background and beats and stuff, and it's, it's a lot of fun. For people who are watching, they might hear uh, acapella and think of movies like Pitch Perfect. Um, how does the way troublemakers work hold up to that stereotype? I definitely don't think that specifically the Emerson Troublemakers um, rehearse as shown in Pitch Perfect. I know a lot of acapella can maybe have some problems with how it's portrayed. I think it's a fun movie get some good laughs. Um, I know Eric's not a huge fan over, <laughs> over here. Um, there are definitely our groups that rehearse more rigorously um, and who are higher level, but us specifically, we're not like that. We're here to just more have a good time and just all bond by singing and performing together. But I definitely think that it does hold true to some groups, just not us. I love that. Well, I'm super excited. I'm excited. I think we should hear you guys sing. Yeah, let's yeah, stop amazing. talking. Let's do it. Let's all right. It. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you. I am tired of this place, I hope people change. I need time to replace what I gave away. And my hopes, they are high, I must keep them small. Though I try to resist, I still want it all. I see swimming pools and living rooms and aeroplanes. I see a little house on a hill in children's names. I see quiet nights poured over ice and tankeray. But everything is shattering and it's my mistake. Only fools fall for you. Only fools. Only fools do what I do. Only fools fall. Only fools fall for you. fools do what I do, only fools fall. Though our lives don't collide, I'm aware of it. Differences, impulses, and your obsession with the little things you like stick and I like aerosol. Don't give a what, I'm not giving up. I still want it all. Only fools fall for you. Only fools. Only fools do what I do. Only fools fall. Only fools fall for you. Only fools. Only fools do what I do. Only fools fall. I see swimming pools and living rooms and aeroplanes. I see. A little house on a hill in children's names. I see quiet nights poured over ice and tinkering. But everything is shattering and it's my mistake. Only fools fall for you. Only fools. Only fools do what I do. Only fools fall. Only fools fall for you. Only fools. Only fools do what I do. Only fools fall. Only fools. Only fools. Only fools fall. Only fools. Only fools. Only fools fall for you. Shut your mouth. 
We fit right in. We fit right in. <laughs> it's almost like we belong. Five, six, seven. No, I'm no, just kidding. You don't want to hear that. Thank you so much for being here. That one, um, I'm, you want me to go? Yeah, go. <laughs> go for it. One more question for you guys. I think going from a pop song like you just did and then going from, a, from an alternative com contemporary, how is it so different for the entire group to switch their kind of, their feelings and the way they sing the songs? Uh, it's pretty much, ooh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty much we've in rehearsal we kind of nailed down the energy of each song so once we know exactly how we want to frame the song in terms of like the energy and the way we want to push it forward it's just all through repetition of doing it in rehearsal of just being able to switch gears when we perform so going from something like the first song where we're like slow exactly, and it's kind of yeah, like different. heartfelt and then going to the last one where we kind of just punch it forward it's just we just got to shift gears and we just practice in rehearsal every day awesome well, I have fun. Well, it definitely shows that you practice. Yeah. Well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was so much fun. Um, before we sign off, I do want to remind everyone that Student Government Association elections are taking place today. So log on to MConnect and vote for your student body presidents, senators. It's really important that we get involvement from the entire student body. And stay tuned because after Thanksgiving break, we'll be back with more awesome guests, more musical artists, and the better shows. Uh, so <laughs> that's all we have for you today. <laughs> and we will be back after Thanksgiving, as Angel said. Have a wonderful holiday. From Good Morning Emerson, I'm Juliana. And I'm Angel. Thanks, Thanks for, for waking, waking up, up with us. us. Why don't you all sing us off a little bit? Sure. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.